So, as we just grip the 5-iron, uh, the next step is going to be the loft and lie gauge. Again, this is a proprietary ping loft and lie gauge. Um, it measures on a horizontal plane, not a vertical plane. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the system here. I'm gonna, for instance, I'm going to custom, custom build this set for Rob. It's going to include the set ID number, which is the serial number. Um, for intensive purposes, I'm going to choose the 5, the 7, and the 9. And I'm going to click OK. We're going to be standard color code at the stand men, standard men's length and the standard loft. Now, as you can see, throughout those pages, there was just different choices. So we can strengthen the lofts, weaken the lofts accordingly. So that's going to be standard. We're going to start with the 5 iron. As you can see, black uh, color code, which is standard, standard length, standard loft, and right-handed. As you can see, the 5 iron is highlighted. We're going to place this 5 iron on the loft and lie gauge. There's two magnets with a digital camera inside. It's going to hold that iron firmly on the, on the machine. We're going to make sure it's firmly applied to the hosel and also to the sole of the club. When we push on the sh shaft into the machine, that's when the camera activates. And as you can see here, currently the spec is blue coming into yellow. We need to move the club three quarters of a degree flatter, but the loft is perfect for that club. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull the club out of the machine, put it in our vise here, and I'm going to apply pressure with the hammer to the toe of the club to knock it a little bit flatter. Done. Put this back in to check it one more time. As you can see, we're creeping into the blue and the black now. We'll get a little bit more pressure. We're going to bend it a little quarter flatter and a quarter stronger. I'm going to bend this down. Closer, as you can see, it's good on the loft. The lie, but the loft needs to be adjusted a little bit stronger. This is our bending bar. You then grab the head of the club. Thirty-nine percent. No, it's not thirty-nine. Bend the club a little bit stronger. And as you can see, just a little bit more blue than we might like. I'm going to touch it just a little bit flatter. And there you go, five iron. The system lets us know when it's appropriate to move to the next club. So that five iron is complete, and we can move on to the seven iron. Okay, so just as we got done with the driver and the uh, hybrid getting the right swing weight, we've now built and adjusted the lot, loft and lines of these irons. I'm gonna go into the system one more time to make sure that we get the right swing weight on these. I'm gonna choose, for instance, the, uh, the specific model, uh, the I-15. I'm going to choose a 5 iron, and the length is going to be standard, and then proceed from there. What I'm going to do is standard, standard swing weight on a steel set of irons for a ping is about D0. I'm going to choose now a default of D0 as the target swing weight, and I'm now going to measure that club. This is now being gripped, and we Again, what it's going to do now is it's going to tell me exactly what CTP to use. What we call a CTP is a custom tuning port. It's telling me to use an 8 gram weight, 8 gram CTP. So I will go over to the drawer behind you here. I'm going to grab an 8 gram weight out of the corresponding tray and I'm going to place that in that club. Uh, double check it one more time with that 8 gram weight in there. See what the reading comes out to be. C9.8 within 0.2 of the D0 swing weight. That's perfect. My club is now complete. And we'll just proceed through the other two irons with the same step. So once we got the right swing weights chosen, the CTPs for the custom tuning port, we use the acetone to make sure and clean out that cavity properly, make sure there's no, no residue whatsoever, and uh, to ensure a proper bond. Clean out all three cavities. Simply wipe down the back of each of the CTPs. Clean them up real good. From there, I'm going to go to the epoxy. Get this mixed up. We apply a real, real thin coat to the back of this, the cavity. 
Shrimp real, real thin. Straight down the back end of the cavity. Spread it all around. And that is ready for the, uh, the weight that we've chosen to get the appropriate swing weight. As in the factory, what we're going to do is we're going to apply what we, we've designed as a clamp to hold that CTP in place and simply let that dry.